Hi, I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and you're watching the Proco Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about something superficial. Literally, we're going to be talking about how to texture the surface of your sculptures. Texturing is the last stage of shaping the clay. Once we've fully and accurately developed the primary forms, then added on the secondary forms, and worked them out to our liking, then it's finally time to start thinking about the surface detail and texture. I say that texture is superficial for a reason. In Spanish, the word superficie literally means surface. When conversations or people are superficial, that means that they have no depth, and sculptures are the same way. If we try to skip important steps that we've talked about throughout the course and try to make up for it with cool textures, our sculptures will still lack the depth that comes from accurate underlying forms. Texturing is not meant to help us find the forms. These forms should already be in place. We could think of texturing as the color on a painting. The more important elements to get correct are the values, light and dark, and the shape and placement of those values on the canvas. In fact, if you have these first elements correct, you can even use colors very different from reality and it can still feel right. A good example is Will Yu, who creates paintings with skin tones that feel correct even when he uses colors that you would never associate with skin tones. Colors like green, purple, fluorescent pinks, and light blues. Yet because all of the values are correct, the painting feels right. The reason that I'm being a little rough <laughs> on texture is because I don't want you to make the common mistake of jumping to the texture too soon. The texture is the icing on the cake. Once we have a cake, then the icing will bring it all together. Another painting analogy that I like to use when it comes to texture is to think of texture like a painterly style of painting versus a realistic smooth style of painting. In a painterly style, you can see each stroke of the brush on the canvas. The other is smooth, almost photorealistic. We might think of texture on a scale from rough, large textures to very realistic and accurate textures like these stone sculptures done by the same artist. Sculptures by Hakon Anton Fagueras give a good example of both styles of texture. In these clay portrait studies, you can see just how clear and dramatic the tool texture is on the surface. In contrast, these sculpture portraits done in stone by the same artist are smooth and soft. Even though the texture is very different in these examples, you can see the artist's mastery of the forms. Both types of texture feel right because the primary and secondary forms are working. One of the most impressive types of texture are hyper-realistic textures. These textures are often used by special effects artists or artists who create wax replicas of famous people. She blots up the paint to blend it in. This technique gives the wax a speckled look that mimics human pores. As well as artists that create prosthetic body parts for people who have lost features due to traumatic events or birth defects. These hyper-realistic styles of sculpting often combine sculpting with painting and casting techniques to create sculptures that are extremely lifelike. Obtaining this high level of realism requires a large time investment at this final stage of sculpting. For this realism, you often need to dedicate as much time to the texturing process as you did to the sculpting process. And both will usually take more time than you think. Sculpting a lifelike replica is extremely difficult, but if you dedicate the time to learn and follow a process to ensure the accuracy of every detail, it is attainable. If you have the patience for it, the number of opportunities that will present themselves to you as a sculptor will increase dramatically. It's your job as the artist to decide what level of detail and what type of surface texture you want to use as a sculptor. I recommend trying a variety of surface textures on different sculptures. From a loose texture that comes from just placing bits of clay to build out the sculpture, to as realistic as you can possibly get. As you're applying the texture to your sculpture, an important thing to keep in mind is being consistent with the texture that you use. In most cases, it doesn't matter how much texture you decide to go with. What's more important is that you treat the entire surface in a similar way. This is a general rule, but there are always exceptions that can be effective. Like the unfinished look of ancient stone sculptures where there's some rough areas where the figure is emerging from the stone. 
The type of clay that you're using may also affect how well it holds the texture. Hard clays usually hold textures very well, whereas soft clays are easier to sculpt, but they can be more difficult to get a consistent or realistic texture. Also with soft clays, the details can be easily erased when you touch it with your hands. Remember, with some clays, you can change the hardness by modifying the temperature of the clay. With water-based clay, the hardness depends on how hydrated the clay is. If you're using clays like Chabon NSP or Monster Clay, you may need to cool or heat the surface of the clay to make it easier to apply stamps or to keep the clay from sticking to tools. With water-based clays, you might wait for it to get to a leather hard stage a little bit firmer so that it holds the texture a little bit better. Okay, now let's look at some different ways to apply texture to your sculpture. And it should be noted that there's many ways to get a similar effect. We'll work our way through textures, starting with the rough, unfinished looking ones that usually require less time, then we'll move our way towards the more complex textures. If you want to do the entire sculpture with only your hands and fingers, you can create an interesting effect by using the texture created by placing the pieces of clay on the surface without smoothing out the clay. This creates a painterly, or should I say sculptorly, style, where the viewer can see the placement of the segments of clay that were used to build up the artwork. This is usually done on larger sculptures. The number of different textures that you can create just using your hands and fingers is impressive, but it is limited. Also, many artists don't like the look of fingerprints all over their sculptures, so let's look at some textures that you can make using tools. In some ancient stone sculptures, you can see how the masters would use tooth chisels to find the forms, and it leaves behind an interesting texture. They would typically go over the form from one angle, and then go over the form again from another angle to create a kind of cross hatching as they worked. A similar effect can be made with a ribbed loop tool, also called a rake, that leaves grooves in the clay. In Zoe Defour's masterpiece demo, she starts with a loop tool that leaves large tool marks in the surface of the clay, and then moves down to smaller tools, leaving smaller tool marks until she reaches the desired surface texture. Check out the full demo at proco.com slash defour for her process of sculpting a portrait sculpture and then casting it in plaster. Okay, now let's move on past these rough textures and look at how to create a smooth, clean surface. We could then choose to leave it smooth or use this smooth surface as a blank canvas on which we can continue to build out more realistic textures. Solvents and brushes can also be used to smooth out the clay. Some artists use 99% rubbing alcohol or even lighter fluid, which dissolves the top layer of clay, making it liquid for a second so that you can use a paintbrush on it and then it quickly evaporates. These solvents can be used on wax-based clays, like the Chavant NSP medium clay that I use, but it can also be used on polymer clays like Sculpey. I prefer not to use solvents for my style of sculpting. I feel like they change a little bit the chemical makeup of the clay. If you're gonna experiment with these solvents, just realize that they're very flammable, so be careful. You can also use tools like this stainless steel metal tool with a flat smooth end to press on the clay and remove the tool or finger marks that are on the surface. This is one of my favorite tools and the soft texture that it leaves behind is very subtle. This subtle texture is how I like to finish most of my clay sculptures. To remove these last tool marks from a very subtle texture, you can also use a heat gun to melt the top surface of the clay. This also makes the top layer become more firm so it will hold details better. Just don't melt it too much or you may have to re-sculpt some parts. If you will be adding subtle textures to the surface, then it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but you should remove most of the previous tool marks. Okay, let's look at some tools and techniques for applying things like veins, wrinkles, pores, and other textures to the surface. These are just some methods that I've learned, but there's many ways to achieve a similar effect, so it's good to experiment. When you start adding texture to a smooth surface, it may look like you're ruining a perfectly good sculpture, making tiny gouges and marks that don't look right on an otherwise smooth surface. But as you continue to work the surface, smoothing out the marks and using many different texturing techniques to add variety, slowly it will start to look more natural and lifelike. We can use a lot of the same tools that we already went over in the Tools for Sculpture video. Loop tools with thin wire, like those made with acupuncture needles, work great for fine details. Needle tools and rake tools can also help build up the texture. A cool trick is to use a thin layer of plastic between the tool and the clay as you're using the tool to texture. 
The plastic will smooth out the tool marks, making the texture look more organic and realistic for things like wrinkles and pores of the skin. Doubling up the plastic or using a thicker plastic will make the tool marks even softer. If you slightly heat up the surface of the clay and then place plastic on the surface and poke the plastic with a tool, you will see how the edges can become even more soft, like the effect of pressing your finger into jello. If you use a tool directly on the clay, it will often leave a mark that doesn't blend into the surroundings. You can use solvents or a heat gun to melt the surface slightly to soften the tool marks. Texture stamps are a great way of applying textures more quickly than it would take to sculpt out the textures one mark at a time. These can be made with a firm silicone, Sculpey, or plaster. Some benefits of using polymer clays like Sculpey to make stamps is that it is very inexpensive, it doesn't crumble like plaster might while still being rigid, and you can make them in any shape or size. Silicone, on the other hand, can be made into a thin sheet that is flexible, allowing you to shape it to the surface of your sculpture. You can make texture stamps from almost any surface to get a wide range of textures. Some useful skin-like textures can be made from the surface of an orange or a lemon or from real or fake leather. By simply pressing the stamp onto the surface of the clay, you are able to copy a lot of visual information very quickly. Some of the textures may need to be built up on top of the surface of the clay. Things like wrinkles and veins are usually easier to build up than to create by removing material. To build these forms, we can make tiny coils of clay and add them to the surface, then smooth out the edges with another tool. We can then go back and add texture on top of these forms to help them blend into the rest of the sculpture. Okay, your assignment is to create different types of texture onto your study boards. Practice some textures. Also, keep your eyes open for items that you can use to create texture stamps for a wide range of textures. Pay close attention to the textures, like that of the skin of your hand or the wrinkles around people's eyes when they smile. If you're really interested in texture, I encourage you to do more research on your own to see how different artists that you admire texture their own sculptures. This video, called Sculpting Prosthetic Skin Texture, is a great video to watch if you're really interested in skin texture. In the premium course, I'll show you my process for creating texture stamps and there will be additional demos, 3D models, and that feeling of knowing that you're a premium member. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas on how to texture your sculptures. Get to it, do the assignment, and I'll see you in the next lesson.